everyone i'm keisha charmaine and i'm back with a video and this video is a little different than what i normally do on my channel i wanted to break up the monotony of all the lock talk and i asked you all to submit questions that are not hair related so questions for me that are not hair related so i asked you guys on instagram and here on my youtube community to submit your questions and i compile them so that's what we'll be answering today and i know i have not uploaded on my channel in a while but i try to stay um active on my community so that you guys know i'm still here and i'm still working and that's the main reason why i haven't uploaded i've been working really diligently but um i want to take this moment out to record this video while i'm feeling good okay and not overworked so um let us begin this may be a two-part video so if um if it's two parts make sure you tune in i'll probably have the second part uploaded in a couple days the first question is if you could move anywhere where would you move i would move to somewhere in california or somewhere in the islands somewhere tropical Granted, I've only visited LA. I visited LA three times because I love it there. While I still want to visit North California and all, all other areas of California, I, you know, I like to go to where I know that I like. So that's why I always go back to LA. However, LA is just as expensive as New York. <laughs> so um, another option I would like to move Two is somewhere in the islands I know it's a lot more affordable and I just love the warm one downside of living in New York is cold in the winter time although it's nice in the spring and summer it is cold in the fall and winter so that's although I do love fall and winter fashion I don't like to be cold what do you enjoy doing that has nothing to do with hair nails or YouTube I am interested in writing I you guys know I have a book out um, I am also working on a nonfiction, a novel, so stay tuned for that. That's a little bit on hold. The writing for that is on hold, so stay tuned. It'll, it'll come. It'll come. <laughs> um, but my book, More Than a Hair Journey, that's uh, nonfiction, and that's out on Amazon. But I'm also into fitness and health. I love to learn about fitness and health. I'm constantly reading about different the different trends in health and fitness i i've been having really bad insomnia lately because i've been working too much and my brain is always concerned about what work needs to be done so when i'm up late and i can't sleep i am researching health and fitness also um personal improvement i'm really into reading about that and researching about that and watching TED Talks and listening to lectures and things like that about how to improve yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, yeah. Who or what inspires and motivates you? Well, um, I'm motivated by my dreams. The future that I see for myself is my motivation so I know that I have hmm I have big dreams I mean not really honestly my dreams are not even that big but um they are luxurious I have some luxurious dreams so that keeps me motivated because I like to live in luxury and when I say luxury I'm not even talking about like like fancy cars and fancy clothes I'm talking about quality that's what matters. Quality. It's not necessarily about like brands or anything like that. I like quality. I like fine things. Things that seem really simple. I like this, the best quality of things. One of my goals is to live in a loft with a view of the Manhattan skyline through my living room window. I see it. It's coming. I'll have that. And I'm not even like one who's into like, like um, apartment tours or home tours, things like that. But I promise you, 
once I get that place, I will show y'all. And I'll show y'all this is what I've been trying to manifest, all right? Because that's just, that's something I really, really want for myself. But yeah, so my, my vision for my future motivates me as well as um, certain successful people. Um, I made a video, I'll tag it right here, explaining why this one individual was very uh, inspirational for me. I'm not going to talk about it now, but um, check that video out if you have not seen it already and watch it, it, watch it in its entirety to understand what I'm talking about. What's my favorite dessert? My favorite dessert would have to be cakes. I know that's a, a cheat answer because cakes is all types of cakes, but I really like cakes. And honestly, I'm a really dessert person. I love desserts. You know how there's people who be like, oh, I like this, but I don't really like that. Nah, that's not me. I'm going to be like, I like this, and I really like that. <laughs> I love sweets. I love treats desserts that's my thing candies it's very very rare that I'll that you'll hear me say I dislike a treat or I dislike a, a dessert or a candy while I've been eating a lot better these days I haven't been eating too many sweets these days I did get a gluten-free slice of vanilla cake from Whole Foods the other day do you have any traveling plans this year plans no I may travel this year but I don't have any plans to do so um, I'd like to. I haven't traveled since March of last year, at, um, a little bit after my birthday. I traveled to LA. Excuse me. I was in Hollywood Hills at Queen Afua's Sacred Woman Retreat, which was amazing. So that was the last time I traveled. Um, I mean, I've gone to Long Island. <laughs> I haven't gone anywhere. I've gone to Westchester. Uh, I haven't really, really traveled. And um, that has helped me save a lot of money, though. I saved a lot of money, and I was able to invest that into my business. So I'm not mad at all. What are your goals for the future? So my goals for the future, um, I plan to grow my business as much as I can. I would also like to invest into real estate to get some more like passive income. I'm all about passive income. So I wanna so I do wanna dabble in things that will get me passive income, easy wealth. Um I'm all about ease, living with ease. I would also like to have a family one day, get married and have a few kids. If my body permits, um, if God permits. I would yell yeah, well, I to have a few kids. A few is a strong word, right? <laughs> Usually millennials don't be wanting to have a few kids. Millennials want to have a kid. <laughs> but I would like to have um, siblings for my kids because I, I I value that experience that I had for myself. I've, I have a few siblings. And that's a question somebody asked me. Do I have siblings? Yes, I do. I grew up with my brother and my big sister, although I do have another big sister and I have a, a baby sister too. But um, the siblings that I grew up with my my brother and my sister um and I, I value that experience so I want I would like to, for my I would like for my kids to have siblings so anyway yeah my goals I like to have a family husband and kids own properties have my business um love light locks that is running itself I could just be the CEO and have other people handling it you know There's nothing too crazy right who inspired me to start my business Nobody inspired me to start my business. Nobody inspired me. I have, I don't, I don't know any entrepreneurs. I mean, I, I know entrepreneurs now that I'm an entrepreneur, you know, with networking and stuff, but I did not have any entrepreneurs in my family that I could think of. My family was very, you know, work, you know, get um, higher education, get um, advanced degrees work and get paid like that and you know retire and get your pension or whatever that but I had no desire to do that I had tried that I did try that for a while um it didn't work out for me that wasn't life you know life sometimes life will, will just knock you onto your path it, it'll feel like you're being forsaken but you're really just being redirected 
and that's what happened with me when I started my business full time because I was just doing it on the side and I feel my voice slipping away mm. but yeah until nobody in particular inspired me I I was guided I was guided by the most high what's the best book I ever read that's really hard to say I could just think of one book that really um moved me and that was eat pray love she was in a transitionary point in her life and she discussed her her journey and um yeah i was very inspired by that i read it when i was a sophomore in college and it just reminded me that you know sometimes life will look a certain kind of way but who knows what the future has for you and you should just you know enjoy the ride and try to flow as much as you can and that lesson is necessary especially if you deal with like anxiety about the future and a lot of worry about you know what's in store for you sometimes you just have to let life happen I mean I'm not saying that you shouldn't be active of course you should but just just know that things things just have a way of working out so I'm sure in the beginning of the book she would have never imagined that by the end of the book she would have had a whole new husband living in a whole new country i think that's how the story goes i forget <laughs> but um yeah life just has a way of working out sometimes your goals change sometimes the people in your life change and it doesn't have to be devastating it can it can just be growth evolution you know diet and fitness goals what's your fitness routine i truly miss going to my personal trainer around the way um i don't go see him anymore however i do have another personal trainer who trains me remotely he's actually he was actually my high school gym teacher slash track coach so he he trains me virtually by um, setting me up with different workouts and i do that at home i actually just started back working out april 1 <laughs> so um i hadn't worked out in a long time because i was having bad acid reflux i think i talk about this all the time but i was having really bad acid reflux and working out was making it so much worse and at this point i'm i feel um i'm a lot better off um so i'm working up i had lost so much weight y'all i lost like 15 pounds and y'all know i'm already a slim little thing so i need to get this 15 pounds back and then some so i'm working on that <laughs> i'm working on that Leads me to my next question was, do you prefer to eat meat or no meat? I prefer to eat meat, but I know, I've noticed that meat is also a trigger for my reflux, which sucks because I'm trying to gain my weight back. An easy way to gain your weight back is by eating meat. Plus, yeah, I told y'all I got, have a wheat allergy now. So, wheat cuts out so many things I could, I could eat. I can't eat anymore. And not eating meat. Those are like the really major things to help you gain weight, but um, I'm I'm working on um, non-wheat grains, gluten-free grains. Um, I'm, I am eating meat though. I am eating it, but I, I'm finding like certain cuts are better um, on my digestive system than other cuts. But um, my goal is to to be meat-free at a certain point. But I'm not gonna do that until I get to a certain point in my body that I feel comfortable with. And when you're trying to heal your body, you don't want to add acid, acidifying, acid forming. You don't want to add acid forming foods to your diet and meat is absolutely acid forming. It's also mucus forming. You don't want to add those things to your diet when you have reflux. And by the way, this is something I learned when I was having insomnia up breathing all night. Acid reflux is not really not what I had. I had airway reflux now what airway airway reflux is is basically it's basically acid reflux but it manifests in sinus issues and in coughing in a chronic cough so you guys might hear i have a i sound a little nasal the cause is truly reflux is what i'm trying to say like the um, gases from your stomach irritating your sinuses and and your voice box why am i talking about this again I forgot my point in bringing this up. What are we talking about? Meat or no meat? I prefer meat, but 
if you're trying to heal your body, it's best to go without it for a while. So that's why I'm trying to not eat meat for, for the next two weeks. To, to make sure the reflux is gone and then I'm going to go back to eating meat. Do you style yourself for your photo shoots and vids? I definitely style myself for my YouTube videos, it, which is not hard because it's usually just, it's just a top. And who knows what's on the bottom? You never know. But for my photo shoots, most of my shoots I style. If, if you see me shooting with Long Tower Photo, that's usually him, he and I shooting together just for us. But if I'm a hair model, so if you see me modeling for Jennifer Lord, Natural Hollywood, then she's doing my hair and she has someone do my makeup and has someone style my outfit. Have you been recognized lately in a funny sort of way? No, but this is it's a little different from what you're asking, but this is a cool story. Um, not too long ago, maybe last month or in February, my friend Brittany hit me up and was like, Keisha, so my cousin, his co-worker, said your book is his favorite book. And I'm like, what? So what ha happened was my, my friend Brittany's cousin, Mercedes, her co-worker, they, I guess they were discussing a creative writing contest they were entering. And he mentioned that his favorite book was by a girl named Keisha from Brooklyn. And Mercedes thought, Keisha from Brooklyn, that sounds like that could be my friend, my cousin Brittany's friend Keisha. So she hit up Brittany and Brittany hit me up. And apparently he was talking about my book. So um, she put me on, on the phone with him. So I was on FaceTime with him and I'm like, wow, like what made you write my, what made you buy my book? I thought that's, uh, first of all, I'm appreciative of you, but what made you buy it as a man? You're not my target audience. So I'm, I was curious as to why you bought the book. He, he gave me his reasons or whatever and I thought that was really really cool um while I say men are not my target audience when it comes to my products when it comes to my channel and all the things that I do of course men will absolutely benefit from my content period and my products period um I always say like if something is geared towards women then men will benefit from looking into that and vice versa if something is geared towards men the women will benefit from from it because we are trying to learn each other we are very confusing was it men are from mars and women are from venus right we're like alien to each other so it's really it's always going to be beneficial for us to learn each other's stuff so i just thought that was interesting that he said that was his favorite book i thought that was really cool where have you traveled to and where would you like to go so um Let's start with where I've lived. I was an Air Force brat. My dad was in the Air Force. So I was born in Maryland. Then I moved to Panama. Panama, Central America. Then I moved to Texas, San Antonio. Then when he retired, we moved to Brooklyn. So I, I started living in Brooklyn when I was like in the second grade. And um, I moved to Queens when I was like 17-ish. Then I went, moved to Albany. Cause I was in college, so let me talk about other places that I um, travel to. So I've been to Guyana, I've been to London, England, I've been to. I don't think I've ever been to Canada. Danielle, I'm coming for you. I'm coming. I'm coming. Um, I've been to Mexico. I've been to Jamaica. Oh, as far as states, I've, I've, listen, I've been to many, many, many states because for one, when my family moved from Texas to Brooklyn, we drove. So I've been to several states, but I guess that was one of my childhood, right? So how about states that I've been to as a grown person? California, right? Florida, Miami, um, namely, I've been to, I've been to Miami a few times, but I've also been throughout Florida a bit. Um, during my trips to Miami. Um, where else? Of course, like the tri-state area. Like, I've... Maine, I've been to Maine. I've... I lived in New Hampshire for a month. <laughs> in a, um, a boarding school program. New Orleans. I love, I love, 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 loved it in New Orleans. I can't wait to go back. The food... Mmm. I love New Orleans so much. Check out my New Orleans vlog, guys. 
check that out. We had so much fun and it was very educational. Check this vlog out. Um, that's all I can think of right now. I don't want to keep running my mouth. I've been, I've been around, all right? Been around the world and I, yeah, yeah. What's your skincare routine? I can make a video for you guys. I'll do that because that'll take me forever to explain. But I'll make a video for you guys. An updated skincare routine video. Because I have a ton on my channel, but I'll make a new one. Do you have book recommendations? Woo! I may have to make a video for this too. I may have to make a video for this too. Because I absolutely do have recommendations. Too many for me to think of right now. I'll make a video for that too. Let me make a note. Who is your style inspiration? You know, I feel like, I feel like I don't really have style. I just be trying to look good. I just be trying to put on things that I like. But I don't know if, if my style is like cohesive enough to like place some anywhere. I just wear what I like. Um, what I like tends to be solid colors. I noticed I don't wear very many patterns. I like solid colors. I usually like, um, form fitting things. I'm trying to get away from that because that, that could be really typical like I, I try I'm trying to like get some more variation as far as the kind of fit of my clothes um yeah but I can't think of any person who inspired me style wise how do you shop for clothes I tend to shop online mostly if I hear about a website that has a sale I'm going to shop the sale and look for things that I like look for individual pieces and I'll keep in the back of my mind what I have that could go with it when I shop. Um, but not always. Sometimes if I see something, okay, I'll just know I'll buy the shoes to go with it later on if I really like it. But, um, and the other part of this question is, do you buy a whole outfit or do you buy piece by piece or do you buy for occasions? So I never buy for occasions. I never do that because that will stress me out. I just make sure that I have clothes for every occasion in my closet already. So when someone invites me to... Uh, a formal dinner I know I have something I could wear <clears throat> versus me trying to hurry up and buy something with some like two-day shipping you know but I usually would buy piece by piece and sometimes if um, if I see something that will go together I'll, I'll buy the outfit but for the most part I buy I would say I buy pieces you know I've tried to do the thrift shop thing but thrift shop you have for you to be able to be really successful thrifting, you have to be a very average size. And I'm very much smaller than average. Not only am I smaller than average, or I say thinner than average, I'm also taller than average. So I'm slim and tall. So it's, it's more difficult for me to find pieces that fit me properly in general. So um, thrifting isn't... I'm usually not lucky with, with thrifting, but shout out to you if, if you get luck. <laughs> Was it hard starting your own business? No. Starting a business is not hard. Running a business is hard. Okay? <laughs> running, it, running it is hard. <laughs> running your business is hard. Not starting it. If you are planning on starting a business and it's hard for you to start it, maybe it's not for you. If starting it is the hard part for you, maybe it's not for you. Because the hard part, that's not the hard part at all, I promise you. Like, the hard part is running it and maintaining it. And I feel like people don't talk about that. I feel like I can make a whole video on that alone, but I won't. <laughs> Take my word for it, okay? Running it is hard, not starting it. Do you have a significant other? Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can always visit www.keishacharmaine.com for hair growth products, hair accessories, and more. But don't leave just yet. Check out my featured video and my latest video.